Hello everybody and welcome back to Wapleville. I got another live session for you here. We're gonna be working on another thing from Mantic Games. We're just getting things set up here. Now this is Rasputin. We're gonna give him a little something extra here. So this is from Reaper Miniatures, a little book like this. I'll show you some other things that I thought about using as well. I like this one because it was on a little stand and I actually moved him back a little bit. I guess I could have moved him back a little bit further, but it would have been maybe hanging over the edge a little bit too much. So we'll stick this thing here. The idea is to have a little bit of a glow coming from this book. It's going to be cast up this way. I also wanted to try out this. Now we've used the orange fluorescent, and this is golden acrylic. It's kind of a high flow, super matte type of a thing. And the orange worked really well on, and I'm pretty sure we used it on Hellboy himself. This is, I think, the first time we used the orange. And I thought, well, oh, first, last is first. He is not last. He is first. How's that? Excellent. Well, glad to have you aboard for another one of these crazy live sessions. Now, it seems like just about all of these are going to have some kind of object source lighting, because here we got Liz Sherman. We did this in the last Hellboy tutorial here. Now that I know the chat's working, I'm going to also make this screen just a little bit bigger so I can actually see what's going on. So what we're going to do is use some of the typical stuff you see me use, like the Reaper liner paints, sepia and red liner. I got blue liner, I think, that I'll throw out there too. We also have just a couple of the contrast paints that you've seen me use in a number of these. Obviously we got the fluorescent paint and we're going to use this maiden flesh here like we always use. It's one of our off-whites. It's not a flesh tone really. It's just a warmer, lighter off-white color. And then we might use some of these creature caster paints right here with the idea that these, as as you know, they really cover. I mean like crazy. So in, in some areas where I maybe need that object source lighting or some really bright color, well, this does the trick for that. We may also use our sponge, and of course, we've got our number eight round craft brushes that we're going to utilize here. So what I'm going to do here is just make sure we got a solid focus on this here. I think we do. And let's do this thing. We're going to start this off in the usual way. Some liner paints. This is just water sitting right here in the palette. We got some brown liner. And you know, I'm going to actually throw, I think, a little more of the Leviathan blue out there. I could use blue liner, but what I like to do is, for the folks that are outside the U.S., that have a tough time maybe getting their hands on those reaper paints that's why i try to throw these in so a little bit of the leviathan blue there mix it with the brown liner and off we go and as always what we're going to do is just get our real quick representation of our lights and darks and i think if you remember the hellboy and especially the liz sherman you, you're trying to get a little bit of the opposite, at least warmth or, or tone from what you're doing for your object source lighting. So we're, we're using the brown and the red liner here a lot because we want that green liner, uh, the, the green object source lighting effect, sorry, to stand out. We actually have some clear green here. That's from Reaper Miniatures. Oh, what the heck, I'm going to grab just a just a touch of sepia liner here yeah the the Wappleville thing if you check out the blog yeah see that's wapeliasblogspot.com well heck you could just search Wappleville there but there is an entire wild west town and it's called Wappleville I, that's a thing it's real it exists oh yeah no doubt about that I'm gonna take a little bit of what, what the heck, let's grab some of the little bit of Fire Slayer flash right here too, and boom, just 
that's going to do it for there. And as that dries, let's grab this guy over here. Again, this is from Reaper Miniatures. Tons of these little familiars and treasure chests, that sort of thing. I wanted to show you these, too. So these are from, from Green Stuff World here. I thought about using this one. See, it's got that pentagram on there. Even thought about the Cthulhu one here. These are really nifty. I did want something that had a glow to it, an open book. Now, these are also from Green Stuff World. They have one open book right here. So obviously, you see it comes two in a pack. Then, think of I was going to add skulls to this. So there's lots of different things. Again, another Green Stuff World thing here. We've got the flaming skulls that we used on Hellboy. Secret weapon, the sack o skulls And... Games Workshop has skulls like this. Now, some of the skulls actually have demon horns on them and stuff. I gave that a thought. Gave it a thought. I said, no, nah, let's just go. We'll just go standard skulls here. So here's a little bit of my sepia liner. And boom, we're just going to throw this on here real quick. Because I want to have that light emanating from the book and sort of casting up on him. Oh, let's just grab a little bit of red liner. Here's a little bit of the, that is flesh tier red. Let's throw a little bit of that in here. So that our wood has a little bit of warmth to it. And then we're going to go back into stuff like brown liner and just keep this darker. Event some of that away. I could if I wanted to use one of my makeup sponges here and boom take some of that away but let's get some of this out here on the palette real quick hey there falcon Owen, how's it going yeah this is this is always a weird crazy time of year this well january just in general is nuts but the first half of january is pretty insane i believe i was painting figures till six in the morning yesterday or something okay so as before we get into our OSL over here real quick. Let's start to start to play around with some other stuff here. Oh, like this street area here, sidewalk, whatever it is. We'll just get some different tones on that. And then we're going to see we're just taking some of that Leviathan blue brown liner mix and we just let some of our Maiden Flesh mix into that, and guess what? It's going to give us sort of a nifty little gray type color here, a very dark gray. I will never forget, and you've those of you that have seen a bunch of these before, you know how not fond I am of the 10 paint, there was a 10 paint set of gray. I mean, it is quite literally 10 jars of gray. And you couldn't get a more dead gray because it's pretty much just black mixed with white. That's not going to really help you there. You just get it's going to flatten out everything that you do. Even some of the the GW stuff. I think that's where I first really started to notice the color temperature of grays. Uh, the folks that have seen my oil painting videos, you know that I love my paints gray because it's got a little bit of a bluishness to it. It's sort of like blue liner, a little bit like Leviathan Blue, probably a darker version of Leviathan Blue. It, it's essentially blue and some brown, because blue and brown, guess what? That makes black. That does make black, believe it or not. Now I am just going to really quickly here, I'm going to take some of that is that the fleshed here red and a little bit of maiden flash here, a little sepia liner? What we're doing, we're mixing a flesh tone. It'll be a darker one to start off with here. Hey, Will, how's it going? Yeah, we're doing uh, the long promised Rasputin figure and sort of bounced back and forth. Did I want to just do the, the fiery type stuff like I did on Hellboy? And I think I might have done that ordinarily, but then I thought, well, 
this way I can show people how to paint different different types of lighting different colors my dark sword videos there's some um, magenta I think there's two two of the dark sword videos have magenta object source lighting in fluorescent paint and that was those are really fun that's part of your patreon page there that's the ten dollar level I believe got a bunch of dark sword miniatures coming up some of the brand new well certainly new ish releases of the the fox and crow folks so as this dries yeah I'm just gonna leave this be as it is so again we want to do something that's glowing here now is it just gonna be a glow coming out of this book or is there gonna be an actual pattern to it obviously yeah, the pentagram thing working here, so it probably was going to have something to do with that pentagram. And it doesn't have to be extreme. It doesn't have to be super extreme. You can see how this already starts to dry, and here we are just working our way through with this warmer, basically a reddish gray. There's even a little hint of purple to it, and I mean a little, as in real little very little bit of purple in there now I got some references there so it, now the the one that's on the, the screen where the video actually is uh, must be from a movie or something like that I thought maybe for the reference for the face and the glow eh, it's not really quite as green I do have to consider and this might sound a little crazy to some, but the temperature of that green. Is it going to be a warmer green like this, or is it going to be a cooler green? We have to decide. We have to decide, and we'll see how that's going to work. can always change it. Let's say it's, it's kind of on the warmer side, and we say, oh, you know what? Maybe you'd be better off with something that's well, on the cooler side, well, you maybe take some Achillean green or something that's almost on the teal side. Do some glazes over the top. All of a sudden, now it's tinted more towards the blue. So all I'm doing, just working on these guys while, while we wait for things to dry. I suppose if you wanted to, you could let it just dry completely. But we're a little, we don't have tons and tons of time here, so we, we accelerate things. And besides, I like doing wet and wet stuff. And Will asks, from doing your videos, painting black without black, have you done stuff on the blog about doing white without white? Actually, yeah, there are, there are definitely some things on the blog. But I've got, let's see, Sar Saruman, both mounted and on foot. I've got... I think two or three Gandalf and the idea is guess what white without white because what what's the most white that I'll probably use is maiden flesh and maggot white something that has a color in it there there might be for some isolated things where I really want to get something strong maybe some kind of bright ivory but even that still has a tint of color to it, a little yellow, basically. Now here, I'm only gonna carry this so far before I, I want to start doing my my green lighting on this. Now, a little table thing comes about to here, so from here up is where we're gonna have that effect be centered. Now back here, I can do a different sort of lighting. I could actually make it more of a bluish light, sort of like a moonlight thing from above. All of that, like I said, we will we'll just wait for a little bit, get that set. Okay. I'm going to mess around with my skin tones a little bit here. And the nice thing about having... Let's get a touch of this green in there. What the heck? 
you have your your mixes like that, your flesh tone mixes. It means I can just go in there anytime I need to with something that's slightly lighter and make myself a whole new whole new skin color, a little less light. And oh, we're even doing a little bit of wet blending here because using a bigger brush. We've got the, the wet palette going, and I think people have seen me talk about the wet palette that's just made out of a Chinese food container. That's all it is. You see me painting out of the, the top, the cover of it, and then the, the body of it, the container, actually that becomes the top once you start using it as a wet palette. And boy, that sucker seals really good. You don't get the mold. I don't have to be cleaning it out with uh, rubbing alcohol or anything like that. And the sweet thing is, let's say it was very tasty. I'm going to turn my brightness a little bit now that we got this stuff done. Yeah, let's let's go in here and let's play around with some of this. Now, see how that's just dripping off the brush there? That is really, really different from this right here. So that is the kind of stuff that I used in, let's say, this one right here. So you got the the green object source lighting work in there. This stuff is is really, I mean, it just sits on the brush like a big old blob, basically. We don't, we're not going to have to rely on the thickness of that here. And what we're going to do is start to play with some and see how much it covers. Now this, yeah, it doesn't cover quite as immediate as, say, the orange did, which we used on Hellboy. And at the end of this video, there's going to be a little end screen that'll be basically a link to that Hellboy video. And you don't have to go back too far to find that Hellboy video at all. It should be real easy to find. Now what I'm going to do is just see here this is pointing up so we cannot you don't want to be putting any kind of a lighting effect on that. This I might actually do the same just sort of show like it's being activated by this book here. Oh, we're going to get the underside of this for sure. Over here, maybe not so much. Now, it, you can also look and see some of my other recent videos, especially where I take a little little tiny flashlight, shine that on it. Now we're going to make this just a touch brighter down here. Let me get my chat visible again. If you got any questions and you're around, they just like Will did, do as Will does, and ask away. That is not a problem. It actually, it just adds to the overall lesson, anyways. Sometimes it, if possible, I can say, well, here, let's just try that. So you can see, we even now with just these first couple of brush strokes, we well established okay yeah we're looking to do some green here here whatever don't want to go too wild with that until I see just where this hits so I think I can go a little uh, maybe a little further down here hey Ken how's it going yeah we are we're back to the Hellboy figures here and remember these are not masters or resin figures or anything like that these are just they're the same ones you guys would get right out of the box because that's where these came from right out of the box so it means you got a little bit of zombie side plastic stuff going on and then some some mold lines to deal with and that was that was one of the reasons why they were kind of asking him mantics. It was, you know, maybe you could do some tutorials on just the regular figures. Because it's one thing, you know, you're working with a resin master. Here, let's give him some. 
Let's see what happens if we do the glowing eye thing here, just real quick. Let's see what happens. That I think that's going to be fun. I'll just give him some glowing eyes. He's got a little bit of green glow there. Book time. Where's my book? Where is my book? So, we are going to... Look at that. See, that's where the light undercoating is. Very helpful. And I can still go lighter from here. That's what the... That titanium white or, or the ivory can do for us. Here, let's get a smidge of some lighting there and we'll call that ready to go now I'm going to grab there it is I'm gonna grab some of the ivory we'll stick it down over here in the corner again this is the pro across stuff oh creature caster they just I don't know if you saw they have much bigger jars now. I think they're 24. These are what, 18s? Now these are 17s. I think the new jars are. Oh, it's Kamitrion. How's it going? They are 24 ounce jars, I believe. Uh, I think it is pound for pound. So like Reaper miniatures, it's it's hard to get a, oh, shall we say, more inexpensive paint than that for what you're getting. So here we're just going to do a big old do the pentagram thing here make that touch more on the green side we'll just have some words I'm just trying to ghost this in here see what works what doesn't work Leave the rest of that on the darker side because, well, if you want light, you got to have dark. So here I'm going to turn this way down. Zoom. Here we go. And now it's a little bit easier to see. The fluorescent paints can sometimes drive the camera a little bit nuts. And I want some of that green there. Okay. We'll let that dry and. I'm going to go back over to here now. And let's do some. Let's do some more skin tones here. That's it. We're just adding some of that Maiden Flash, but it will just add a touch of a cooler color here. That's a touch of that Leviathan blue. We got to do some hands on him. We'll do his face. Now I can turn this back up again. Not quite that bright. There we go. Uh, let's see, we got a question here. Let me get back to my. Oh, let's see. I like to try floral colors never got my intention. Well, I can say, gosh, when was it? Was it 2011, 2012, when I was doing my Dark Eldar army for the Adepticon tournament? Just happened to see this uh, an old site called FRP Games. I would always check their clearance stuff, and they happened to have basically their entire range of Vallejo fluorescents. They were clearance, eighty nine cents a jar. I got them, and I thought, well, <clears throat> I'll probably never use these things. But I, it was less than a dollar a jar, so no big deal. Maybe I just use them on terrain. Now I use them all the time, and it's not just for object source lighting. Sometimes when I'm painting gold, I'll actually use some of the yellow or the orange in there. Sometimes I will mix the magenta in there. The blue, if you're looking to make a really intense blue, like some kind of ice or whatever, sometimes that's it's fantastic. I, well, the Liz Sherman, I used blue on that, the fluorescent blue. There is a fluorescent blue in this golden acrylic stuff. Oh, Comitron asks, you always at what works and what doesn't work? What if it doesn't work? 
oh geez, I've, I've had that almost every time I paint. I'll do a scent mug, I'll go, eh, yeah, don't like it, or nah, doesn't work. Nah, just paint right over it. Um, I, I think you've heard me say, whatever you do, please stop stripping miniatures and stoking them in simple green and all that other kind of stuff, because you can really just use that what you did as an underpainting or just work from it as opposed to just completely annihilating it and starting over because when you constantly keep starting over all the time you just well you get discouraged and you just said well okay I just wasted the last two hours of painting or whatever if you at least utilize that as say some kind of an undercoating then you can say alright well didn't quite go the way I wanted to but I was able to get something out of it. I salvaged something. We have never stripped a miniature in our lives. Uh, maybe an eBay figure where there was big piles of glue on it or something like that. Or testers paint. It was almost like house paint. Other than that, there's we're not we're not doing the, the stripping of the miniatures. It's just not it. We're not doing that. So we're, we're taking some green here. We're going to mix some of that into our skin tone for a little bit of shadowy type things. But all the time, it was, well, last night or whatever, when I was doing that late night painting thing and I, I tried something, I said, ah, you know, I really wanted to get some reflected earth colors in this metal. It just didn't translate that way. So I just painted them out of there. And it was it was no big deal. It took a oh, couple of minutes tops. It was gone, and I would have completely forgotten about it if you hadn't reminded me. And I said, "Oh yeah, yeah, I did kind of play around with something there to fix it up or change it." Now that happens all the time. Heck, it's probably going to happen here. I may not always think to verbalize it, but there will be times where I just say, "Yeah, you know what? I'm going to make a change here." that book might completely change. I, I might go much darker there. I might try to put something else on there as far as, I don't know, lettering goes or whatever. It's, what are we, 20 minutes in? Ah, 28, basically. So what I am going to do is enhance some of the darks around the eyes, especially if I want those to be glowing let's get some let's get some dark around those uh, I won't have the inside of his mouth be <laughs> green though that's I've done that on some skeletons and that sort of stuff okay let's do another little quick thing here remember that clear green I was telling you about we are going to use that and this is what I love about my Reaper clear paints they can be opaque but they can also be a semi opaque they can be a nice glaze and that's what we're gonna do right here like so it starts to give it a nice little greenish tint glazing is not necessarily just making stuff darker as it sort of enhances our glow Got to remember, don't put any of that green stuff there because it really would not reach that portion of them. I can do this as many times as I need to to tone down some of that green. So you have to just sort of be willing to work back and forth. Sometimes you're going to be more con focused on adding more lights and sometimes you're going to be toning things down this is another reason why i do the the, the shaded base coat type stuff because if i need to make a change or whatever let's say i didn't want the eyes to be glowing well basically i could pretty much just paint some eyeballs in there and it really would be none the wiser again it'd be a change but not necessarily a huge permanent one or, or you know, vastly different from what was originally there, I guess I should say. You know, this half department's been another 
very long day of working. Now, actually, I did post a video. It, it's a, initially for the the patrons, but it will soon it'll go up for more of a general audience type of a thing. It was. It turned out to be kind of a. I don't know, a celebration of 20 years of miniature painting where basically showed, discussed, whatever, how things have changed in the last 20 years of miniature painting for me because this, we're basically getting into, well, for me, technically maybe 21 years, I guess. It all depends on... You know, those first few figures that I did, really, I don't necessarily count those. And where are, where'd you go? Here you are. So, yeah, this is one that I just did. And it was basically, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is something that I sculpted about 20 years ago, painted him up, and the idea was to show, well, what would he look like now? Speaking of now, we are going to grab some of this ivory here hit the eyes maybe again make them even brighter there we go and now we're going to hit this symbol and let's see what happens now when we mix this with our fluorescent green that is going to it also kind of changes the fluorescent green a little bit. It's gonna, it's weird, it's gonna actually dull it. It won't have quite the potent effect because we we actually had a friend of ours, he was a chemist, we had him look at fluorescent paints. He said, okay, what's the deal with fluorescent, fluorescent paints? And he said, well, they're just super translucent, so light can pass through those way more efficiently than it normally does. And that was about it. There was no real magic thing to them or whatever. It was all basically can light trans transfer through it quicker. What I'm going to do is take some of the... And this is another thing. The clear Reaper Clears love to play with the fluorescence. They really do. And you can see I'm going to just tone this down a tiny bit. We'll let that dry, and then we're going to go back in and enhance some of the light effects on our book there. But remember, it's not really, it's going to be hard to see some of that. It's going to be actually very hard to see. I was initially just going to glue it on there to start with, and I said, well could be really tough for you guys to actually see what the heck I'm doing so that's why I didn't go that route now again the this might all change here too depending on where the where the book actually hits there I'm just kind of making a little bit of a judgment here based on what I remember from earlier today and what I'm gonna do is maybe yeah, so we're going to use some of that clear green around the edges here. Let's mix with the fluorescent. There we go. <clears throat> because now it looks like it <clears throat> sorry, has more of a glow. Yeah, it's, uh, it just got, well, I guess it got a little bit colder here. So <clears throat> the heater's kicking on, and that makes the air drier until it, of course, starts to then rain insanely, like it always seems to, and then the air gets too wet and has the opposite effect. All right, I think that is dry. Let me see what I can do here with... It's going to get that... I think I want more of a suggestion of the pentagram. Initially it was just too too much. It was like it was just pasted on there. I didn't want that. And now you see when I add these lighter 
Lighter colors like that, the actual the words start to come out a little bit now. That's good. Oh, I'm going to go back in with my fluorescent green here. Like I said, I'm not going to overflow too much on this glow here. Because <clears throat> if I do, uh, you just you lose the lighting effect. It's what gives it that lighting effect is the these darker colors around the outside of it. Here, I'm going to grab my clear green and boom there we go well mr spider here what the heck we'll do that on him too i didn't even realize that spider was there until i started to prime this thing and we'll darken down a few edges here and Okay, let's real quick here. Maybe get this thing glued in place. Aha. Uh -huh. So I think I was pretty. Yeah, I think I guessed just about right on where I wanted that to go. So let's just do a quick little, little bit of super glue in here. Now, normally I would file down where this would go on the base, but I don't really have time for that. We're just going to slap this on right about here. I'm going to give that a second or two to dry. I'll just talk about some other thing. Oh, yeah, this is another thing I've been trying to talk about in more of the, the videos here this anti-shine matte varnish it's well it's the one thing that we use from our army painter we've used it for years this you can brush on it starts out clear it ends clear you can do it inside so like if it's raining outside or whatever if it's cold or hot you can do this in your climate controlled environment and you can then put more in a certain area so i, I want to show you this too this is another thing that i did with object source lighting I'm going to get my brightness back up here a touch. There we go. So this was with metallics. I actually used some Green Stuff World metallics, the metal medium from Vallejo, a bunch of different things. But we still used the fluorescent paint. And that actually mixed with the metal medium. And actually let me do fluorescent metal effects. That was pretty fun. Don't mind me while I just get a little drink of water there. Now let's get to some of the rest of them. Let's get to the to the back of this guy here. Now you have seen me messing around with the that grayish color. Let's see if we can't get a little bit of I don't know, blue. So I'm going to take the Leviathan blue here. Some of the maybe if I see how that almost turns that a purple. I'll make sure my palette's in the right spot here. Yeah, let's get that a little little more on the grayish side. There we go. Just like on the Liz Sherman, we got to find ourselves some other colors here besides just one one grayish tone. There's all of this. We got to get more. Got to get some more. And then we're also going to be working some darks back into this. Well, you can see the Maiden Flesh mixed with the Leviathan Blue. It's just, oh gosh, not all that dissimilar to if I was to mix, say, the, the Maiden Flesh with the Blue Liner. Now, that would have a little bit more of a greenish tint to it. The Leviathan Blue is a little more on the reddish side. So you can see we're not just making this lighter. We are giving a little different of tone. Now, somewhere I've got a Keelian Green like here might play with that a little bit too i'm just going to throw a touch of it over there and yes this is very different than how people are using the contrast paint they're not quite using it this way they're just kind of slapping them on there oh, we got ourselves a can ask have you ever do gw basing miniums 
yeah actually now oh, it was for the the patreon page but i used oh gosh what was it called the there was the martian soil one and then there was the oh it was one of these it was brown uh this one i think yes yeah, sterling battlemire and then the other one sterling mud i think and i did some crackle effects with those Yeah, it was uh, part of my basing series that I did. And there, I've used the green stuff for crackle paint. I've used Vallejo's crackle paint. I haven't necessarily seen huge differences in them. I know that, I guess the color maybe is different, but then I don't care about the color because they're all going to be primed over anyways. To me, is a yeah, crackle paints are kind of the same. Uh, I've used the Vallejo things like sandy paste, and I'll show you in a, in a second. I'm just getting some more of the. These are more of the bluish, sort of moonlight, I guess, effects if you want to call it like that. On his shoulders few places on his cloak here all I want to do is just get some different colors this it's not going to be quite as like that painting black without black and I'll show you one of those figures too in a bit yeah so see that really there you can see the book over there I know there's there's some other ones that that GW makes too I don't know if I've Trying to think just what I've tried and what I haven't. I think there were some that were sitting around at Adepticon and we grabbed those and I played around with them here and there, mostly in comparison to other things like the Vallejo stuff. Jeez, I think almost everybody now makes some form of crackle paint that's kind of all the same. So where did you go? I've got my, aha, uh -huh, here we go. So this is actually some of the Vallejo sandy paste over the top of that. That's Vallejo sandy paste mixed with some Liquitex heavy gloss gel of all things. I guess I may need to start getting some matte gel if I'm going to be doing things like the sand effects. Yeah, it's, I'm going to go one more step later with the Again, that's the Maiden Flesh slash Leviathan Blue mix. A little bit of Achillean Green in there. Let's get a little touch of this into his beard and then now let's see what we need to do on our some of our darks here. So I'm going to grab some of my here's my brown liner here. We'll throw this out there. Because we pretty much tore through the original brown liner. We'll mix some of that again with the Leviathan blue, and now we're going to really intensify some darks here and we're not black lining or anything like that I just added some water turned it into a glaze Let's see how much darker that gets I'm gonna use my hand again just to wipe some of that away and we're gonna even do some of that over over some of our lighting effects there. Let's have some sepia liner and some of this maiden flesh mixed together and see if we can't put some texture on this wooden pedestal. Just wanted to make sure that that glue was relatively dry before I started fooling around with that. And then I will get just to, I'm going to play around with some different browns into that beard. I 
And the GW Paint seemed a lot like the Vallejo. It was really, when I tried the two of them, I, just, I was searching for a difference. It was the same thing even with the, the Green Stuff World 1. Now, it seemed with those, there was some were thicker than others. And, of course, there were different colors, but it did seem like you had a little bit of difference in thickness there. I think the GW ones, it's really more to do, like the Martian stuff, it's basically the color of it because not everybody wants to have to paint that stuff. And there's a, a technique that you can do where you paint underneath it and then you put the crackle paint over the top and when it cracks, it reveals the paint underneath. I think I tried, that was... An experiment that actually just it didn't work the way I, I hoped it would what was I trying to yeah I was trying to do like a, a lava effect that way where I painted the lava and then did the crackle paint over the top mixed it with black paint only the cracks were way way too fine the one thing I did learn with the crackle paints and this is what I went over in those videos the more water that you put in it, you can actually thin it down. So I'm adding a little bit of red to the cheekbones here. When you thin that stuff down, you get finer cracks. When you really pile that stuff on right out of the jar, you're going to get thicker cracks. So that was that was a handy thing that I discovered. I'm getting a little bit of, you can see over a little bit of reddish tone here on our on this wood stuff trying to do the same thing and it's gonna get some some other colors up here look at his beard his beard is dark so I'm gonna go here with some, some brown liner I want to do another one of those glazes here just darken that down you can always go back lighten up so see these are the the changes that I was talking about earlier Ready to say yeah. Didn't didn't really like the how that was looking. Gonna make a change. I'm certainly not gonna go all the way back down the primer or anything like that. Yeah, so now it it looks like he's got that under lighting. Now that's what he tried tonight, paint a lava colors and then PBA glue and pulled on the medium. Yeah, I was I was a little bummed at that the way that worked but I just I had never tried the crackle paint before so I didn't know that whole idea of thinning it down using it thicker it was also just a cheap sort of craft crackle paint it was not an an actual say one from Vallejo or GW or something like that I may still fool around with that technique again now that I have stuff like the GW crackle paint and give it a shot and see what happens can't hurt that's for sure I'm gonna go back here I'm gonna go back to some lighter things now like I said I would just I'll be going back and forth and back and forth this is certainly a little bit more on the watery side I want it thinned down because it's almost like a a light glaze and yes you can you can glaze lighter that was another thing that we just kind of learned by accident so oh, wait a minute I can actually take a lighter color and glaze that over a darker color that's handy and it's it's really been valuable on so many different things like right here, I don't want this to be a very bright highlight or anything, but instead of me having to paint maybe three stages of lighter colors there, what if I just do the one? Or maybe it's, it's two instead of three or four or five. In any case, you're you're saving yourself some time and None of us has infinite time for a miniature painting. We wish we did, but we don't. 
only have so many hours in the day. I've, I could really use some 60-hour days here this week, that's for sure. But there's not. So I'm just going to have to make do with what I've got. Now here, uh, on this side though, if I get too, if I go too bright with some of these things, it, it kills the lighting effect. Or I have to make the lighting effect lighter, and then that starts to run into its own limitations. Because, well, just how bright is this book, the light coming out of here? I mean, that's just, that would be a little bit crazy. So now I've changed the beard color a, a bit. And what I'm going to try and do is maybe pull out a few strands of his beard here. Like I said, not a resin master. This is the regular production miniature out of the box. So I'm sure the resin master is a little, maybe a little more texture here in his beard. And probably on his mustache too. I was tempted to hit that with some green, but then I realized, no, it really, it's kind of in shadow. Yeah, I think I'll still stick with the the eyes being a little bit more on the glowing side of things. Here, let's see if I can. I'm going to do some small glazes here and there now. As I said, there's some, some mold lines that kind of run right through the fingers and the hands, so it's only so much I can do there. There was sort of one that runs right along the edge of these fingers, so I'm going to just try and paint in some separation here. Let's see if I can't, yeah. Actually, need to get some more skin tones here. I'm just trying to figure out how light should that be. Got some on the top of his head there. A few here. Let's do some a few things on his beard there. And as always, if they're just if they're too light, I can always go back in, tone those down. Same thing I did on the other hand. Let's do that on this one. Especially on the ends of the fingers, on his thumb here. Okay, ears. Are, there's one ear. I don't really see an ear there, so I'm just going to paint something there and <laughs> give the impression of an ear. Now, with the book in place, the paint's dry. See, I was thinking of doing a, a greenish glow there, but I'm not sure I should really do that. Not so sure I want to do that. But I am now going to look and see exactly where this green hits. And I think I can do a little more here. I think I can hit this his chest here. There's a few other smaller fold areas now that once with all the rest of it sort of taken care of I can here let's work into some smaller areas now obviously I think I can make this a little bit brighter too I think yeah I remember that's got some of the pro acryl white in there which is going to make that more intense The heck, I'll do a little more on his beard, and now I'm going to go back into this. That's got a little bit of the clear green in it. That's that's what I wanted to see. I'm going to wish I had remembered to have one of my little flashlights here. I could have did the whole shining of the flashlight on this, and you could have seen how. For me, I don't really do that too much anymore. I just... I've done this so often I don't really need to 
fool around with that, but for folks that are new to the object source lighting, then that can really be handy. That little trick there. I'm going to turn him this way because I need to get at this part. And you notice see how that's basically sort of a shadow area in there? That's an important thing that I've started to emphasize more recently with some of the object source lighting videos is to think about not only where that light is casting, but where it's not, or where it's casting a shadow. Because actually that can almost make it more convincing that all the light colors you could possibly add to it, believe it or not. So we're going with a little more of the green in here too. Let's see if I can. Yeah, I'm going to add just a touch of that into the onto the book here. It's instead of just that the page itself is glowing, maybe something on the page is glowing. It essentially helps the book maintain a little bit of its shape. We'll do a little, yeah, a little more here. But I've got to be. Got to avoid the temptation to let this kind of drag out into too many other areas here. I also want to make sure that that's not just straight up white. I got to get some of the fluorescent in there. Now, it's going to be tough for you to see because he's sort of in the way. That's a, that's a little better. Uh, really, unless I... You hold him like this. When you see him like this, you don't even see the pages at all. I also wanted to keep some of the original page... Oh, look at it. Now you can see it. I wanted to keep as, well, as much as possible of that original page color there if you want to call it that. And you could spend as long as you wanted to doing refinements on this. You wanted to spend eight hours on this guy, well that's that's just fine. Now I don't have eight hours to paint on him here for obvious reasons. That's why I tried to develop these Little techniques and such. Here, let's see if we can't get some of this green into the eyes. It's it might not even show up on camera, but there's definitely now a little more of a greenish hint to his eyes. I see some folds here that I can. I think I can get a little more of the green on those. Now, should that, it might even reach over here a little bit. Let's use some of the not so bright green over there. Yeah, I also, I keep forgetting to get enough of the, this lighter green even around this, this glowing symbol here on his chest. Real quick here, I know you can't see it because your view is blocked, but I'm going to just want to drop a few more lighter tones here on Like so. Fingers here. I'm going to see if I can get some separation on the very ends. So that worked over there. Is it going to work over here? I think so. I'm 
there. Yeah, because there was quite literally a, like a mold line thing that went right along there. That helps create a little bit of separation. Now we're going to go in the opposite direction. We've been doing a lot of things with lighter colors. Let's do some darks again. It's that whole notion of going just back and forth. I know some people, they, they like it. Well, okay, I'm at this stage. I'm at this stage. It means I'm this close to done. Well, for me, that's I'm not going to be doing that. I, I need to be able to say make that, that change where I say, uh, yeah, now that I've changed this, well, now I have to, I have to change that. And I'm just more willing to make those changes because, well, I just haven't spent a, a forever painting one little section. So I want to get this a little bit darker here. And it's just, it's a semi glaze. It's a sort of glaze. <laughs> That's a highly technical painting term, a sort of glaze. different from assorted glazes I suppose and now just like I did on him it's time to get some darker things going on his book stand here because that is going to also enhance the glowing nature of the, the pages if this is a little bit if this has some strong darks on it Even there, even as close to the, I guess the light source or whatever you want to call it, as that. Here, let's do a few little, drawing a little bit of texture there, and let's see if we can go the other way now. There's essentially little pause on the bottom of this thing so what the heck we'll do a few of those why not and then I might I might grab some of this this is again the clear green here little touch of the fluorescent Oh, Ken says, one of these deals, try paint always oh, selling a figure. Well, thanks. I, I really do hope that it just makes it a little less scary, a little more doable. An engineer to draw is in the house. Welcome in. Yeah, you can, as always, you know, let's say you missed the beginning of, the, of one of these things. You can always go back and watch them from the very start. I know people usually get weirded out by the very start because it is not this kind of starting process that they are used to seeing. This is definitely much more, oh, what shall we say, it's more gritty, that's for sure. There is no neat little, well, look, I get to see all of this, that the face is all done now. Well, yeah, you haven't painted anything else except for that face. I'm going to... A little bit of my yeah I need to get some lighter green down here yeah I'm just gonna keep working this back and forth I may continuously darken and lighten that book here and there I didn't really spend that long on it we've spent exactly we spent an hour on him so far, and probably less because we were talking about materials too. What the heck? I'm gonna see if I can't go even slightly lighter here, darker there, which means now I've done that. I'm gonna take some of my some of this. And I've got to darken these this this part of the book here. There's no way I can have 
I want it to be that light and have it translate as lighter. I've got to do something like this. And that, yeah, that already makes a big difference. I'm going to get a touch of green in there. So I just mixed some green in with my basically sepia liner. That's better. Now, I'm not making it one solid blob or anything like that. Here, let's get Mr. Spider a little darker, too. He shouldn't necessarily be glowing. I'm even going to get some of this brownish color here onto his cloak. Maybe I'll even do something like this. Maybe it's not quite muddy, but maybe a little dusty. I, I could use weathering powders for that too but sometimes uh, that means I have to get out the, the rubbing alcohol and the powders and it's get a little on the messier side and I don't necessarily want spatters or whatever I think it'll give the cloak maybe a little more of an interest here because now this stuff up here, that's going to look that much more blue. I'm not, yeah, I want to get some down into that crevice there. Let's get some on the front side of this cloak. And I can even stipple in some mud spatters, I guess, if I want. Also going to go back to darkening some of those things on his beard. And here's another little thing we've got to do. I want to get some greenish light on the, basically between his eyelids and eyebrows. Can that, can we do that? Let's try it here. Oh, let's see. Going to get the Urkin brand figure into a follow session. Yeah, that was... Boy, that was really fun. I would love to just paint a bunch of Rohan figures right now because just seeing that and how much fun that was. Where is he? He's around here somewhere. Aha. Uh -huh. No, well, those are my other Rohan guys. Well, he's around. I'll find him. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's the one. That was fun with all the, the freehand. That was just a few live sessions ago. I'll make sure my palette hasn't shifted too much on you. Here, let's go a little touch lighter. And I think you can see what's happening right underneath. Almost as if the glow is happening onto his skin because otherwise it just looks like well we didn't paint his eyes they're just white so I'm trying to get a little bit of glow onto his skin as well and that really helps Let's see if I can't push this one little bit lighter Let's see if I can one there So, book, casting onto here. Now, remember that Pro Acryl green that I was talking about? Let's get out some of that. Now, that, it is a little bit on the warmer side. But I'm, I want to actually change the... Change this green around. So it has more than just one tone to it. So now it should have a little bit of a warmer tone. It's also now going to be that much wow that's opaque holy smokes and boy did that make that warm wow that really changed it fast all right not a not a bad thing at all it was expected yeah it's gonna just like on the when i do those cloaks and i say you know i want to get some extra depth by having more than just one type of red maybe a red that's got a little more blue in it red that's got a little more 
yellow or orange in it. Yeah. It was it was looking all so much like it was. I had just taken a little bit of a flashlight and pointed at them here. Maybe now it looks a little more, it'll have a little more magical energy to it because there's some different tones. There's a little bit of warmth that's being added to this. Yep. Another one of those changes that I, they're right there, you know, the palette's right here. Let's, let's get some, some of that white into there. Still want to have a little touch of my fluorescent in that. And we'll brighten this up. So I've got a ton of object source lighting videos. There, There's live sessions, but, well, like you saw, the, the Necrons there, that was part of my army painting series. That was all about the object source lighting, but mixing it with metallics, which you never see. I mean, you never see object source lighting and metallic paint because they're kind of, well, if you do fluorescent stuff or any kind of lighting effect on metallic paint, well, that paint's not metallic, so it's just going to look almost like a safety stripe or something. It's not going to look like actual lighting. And that is that was a whole big experiment. I do suggest the Army Painter pledge level because, well, once you sign up for that, I will then send you links to around 260 hours worth of videos, maybe even more, because I'm adding new videos every pretty much every other day. Pretty sure in December. Was it 17 videos that I did that were, on average, two and a half hours long? I think that's a little bit more video content than most. I'm just going to guess. <laughs> I'm just going to guess it's a little more than, well, I don't know, like the next 20 combined. Can you, oh, you can almost see it. I know he's in the way. I know he's, his arm is sort of blocking what you can see there. But let's, I will, I think, yeah. And try and get a little touch of green light out here. I just, to me, I think it'll translate better. I know it wouldn't necessarily happen. But I think the, the book needs it. Now, I'm not going to do it on the underside of that, but maybe even out here, I'll hit a few little greenish highlights there. I'm increasing the green over here because I'm just, now that the book is in place, remember before I had a kind of semi-guess at where all that was going to go. Oh, yeah, this also, I mean, this part of his sleeve is closer to it than the top part, so this also needs a little bit of lightening there. Yeah, and that's the clear green mix with some of the fluorescent. Now we'll throw a little of that on his hand, too. Oh, the other thing I see all the time with object source lighting and this will happen, especially where they're trying to... Oh, it's a Gary in the house. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll see object source lighting where the light is darker than the surface. And it just... That's... Instead of trying to add... Make the surface that it's reflecting onto darker, they basically just... Tr throw the color on there and it's it's a very unusual type of lighting where the light is actually darker than the material it's supposed to be lighting and I'm just talking about that because what did we start with we started with more of a dark over here on this this cloak now you don't always have that advantage like that Harad figure that I showed you with the with the white 
or let's say it's Gandalf or Sauron in their in their white robes how the heck do you show object source lighting on them there's only one way you can't make their robes white you can make them lighter but basically what would happen is the let's say it's their staff well it's going to be casting light onto their cloak so the rest of the cloak that's not lit is going to appear darker and that's you know, maybe with one of the Saruman or one of the I think I actually did do a Saruman figure that had a glowing staff and he's in his white robes but you can be sure that those white robes they were a whole lot darker and that meant that the lighting that I did on his staff showed up so here just look at this a little transition of bluish color here to some more like almost a reddish purple and then in more of a tan but even this well like on the book here I had to create these darks over here if I wanted it to actually well translate as something that was light oh Ken says he still needs to sign up for the army painter level now oh, that's good yeah hopefully and I know with me I'll sometimes as I'm packing miniatures to ship off I'll be playing you know, sometimes YouTube tutorial videos or whatever or well terrain tutorial videos I try and catch those whenever I can let's get a few little things of yeah some lighter tone on here let's do something with the skin over here something with the skin just kind of a large area right here yeah now it, when you sign up it's the videos are not just sitting there I, I send you links so and you notice I took some green mixed that in there and we are doing some it's a little bit of a glaze of kind of a greenish color over that skin tone I think I need to give him some darker eyebrows here it's also gonna make his eyes that much lighter there we go that helps let's hit this one to this is another place where I got to think about a, a shadow being cast because I had that that lighter and I have at least two of those running I've got oh let's see the Osiarchs I've got some I got those prepped for a series I've got the Knights of Dol Emroth those are prepped for a series I'm also doing the that Space Marine series trying to paint kind of one of each chapter got the Sisters of Battle prepped Aeronautica Imperialis planes prepped so let's just say that January there might even be more but don't feel shy about or hesitant about you know not watching it all the way through and then picking it up again the next day I have to do it all the time and some of the historical videos are basically the biographics and geographics those are only 15 20 minutes long sometimes that takes me three sessions to watch just one 20 minute long thing sometimes it can even reinforce when you maybe see a part of it a second time see I'm just now going over with my cl uh, clear green something I like to do a lot especially at this stage it's, it starts to really mesh the the lighting with the rest of it just tones it down a little see like right there tones that down a bit um, now I'm still well there's a lot of dropped frames I guess 
So hopefully it's back. Uh, well, we're getting towards the closing stages here anyway, fortunately. Yeah, there's always one day of week here. Yeah, I'm just looking at the drop frames. There's a lot of drop frames there. There we go. Yeah, I don't know... And then one of the, well, there's many reasons why these are done at this hour of the day, night, whatever you want to call it. And well, part of it is it's just, it's with Kathy doing hers during the day. It's just easier for me to do these and not interfere with her. So see, we've got more of a sweep to this lighting now. Oh wait, no, it's only 120 drop frames. I think I was I saw the wrong number. Hmm, I'd like to I'd really like to creep in a little more of the green there, but we're not gonna do that. What we are gonna do is maybe just like what we we're doing on the robe, I'm gonna do some of that on the book here. Especially around the periphery. I'm gonna Mix the fluorescent green in with that too. Now let's compare. So again, they're both using the fluorescent paints, the golden acrylics, fluorescents, but you have a really different look here. I mean, they're the same brand of paint, just having one being the the orange versus the green makes such a big, big difference. Now I'm going to try and go back and do some lighter things here again on the on the book. Because this is supposed to be casting light on them. It better be light. Yeah, that's, that's doing it now. And I know it's going to be tough for you to see. Just bear with me here while I enhance that pentagram there, some of the lettering on the book here. And maybe I'll do a little light on the edge of this here. I'm trying to avoid, like I said, going too crazy on adding highlights to the book itself outside of just the pages oh thanks Ken well at least I know that I'm still surviving here although sometimes I I know it happens with Kathy someone will say oh man you're you're gone but then everyone else will say nope it's fine. It's the vagaries of doing the live stuff. You never know what the heck is going to happen. I'm going to try and get a touch more light there. Let's see, with that cat, it's not really going to reach over there. I just, yeah. I'm going to have to do more of a subtle, little bit of a clear green over here. Yeah, just a bit. The light may not actually reach all the way over there. I just want to do it, though, because it makes that area look a little more interesting, especially from this angle here. Oh, I guess it's okay. So it maybe it did go and then start again because it's showing as six minutes. All right, so maybe it did it did bounce or do something.
So this green definitely much smoother. Our green here inside the, the pages of the book itself is that starting to get a little bit silkier too. I'm tempted tempted to take uh, it's a little bit of the Leviathan blue mixed with some of the brown liner. And I'm trying to the top of the to give them an eye lid here. Right there. This is something I would normally just do with the liner paints, but I'm trying to use more of the contrast paints. So yeah, that's a little bit. There we go. Let's see if I can't strengthen this one too on the other side. There we go. And maybe even on the on the eyebrow itself, and let's strengthen the beard here. Yeah, just make that a little darker. Man, with all of the between the the Marvel Crisis Protocol stuff and and these for the Hellboy, in some ways I'm a little bit painting blind on it because I'm just not quite so familiar. Oh. Uh, so Trevor says sent to add and then came back. That's weird. Well, I guess maybe that's <laughs> all of a sudden and we're back. I guess that's what happened. Like, yeah, now it shows nine minutes. And it shows 360 drop frames. That, I don't know. I have no idea why there would be, for all intents and purposes, a lesser internet signal now than there had been when I first started this, which was completely fine when I checked it. I'm just glad, and I think what happens with with Kathy when she's doing her Twitch streams is it just kind of ends the stream and boom, you're done. Like you drop too many frames, you're out. I guess here it just goes to an ad. How's that? I'm going to do the same thing here on the beard that I've been doing on the, the cloak and the book. I'm going in with the clear green because basically what I had was just the fluorescent green the really light stuff on the end of the beard did make that much sense this now starts to make more sense it all starts to make a whole lot more sense yeah now there's more of a gradual uh, let's see when are you back on the oils that is going to be well the what is that? The Doe Amaroth series for sure. And then there's some large creatures that I'm doing. And I think, well, you saw, here, let me get some of these out here. You saw these, right? I'm trying to use these guys in the next series. I've basically been testing them on regular commission figs first to see, because I need to know, well, do they, how fast do they dry? Are they like the basically the MIG ammo oil brushers. I also have uh, this, which I'm going to use on some larger figures. I, I don't think I'm going to try that and the Optilungs. That sounds weird. On, on the same project. So I'm thinking the, uh, the Warcry stuff. I've got the, it's not Untamed. Well, actually, there's a few untamed beasts that I was using as practice. But oh, was it, uh, the snake guys, oh, the splintered fang, yes. So I'll be doing oils with them. Yeah, that's just so much more fun. Now, I, I need to get a few more lighter areas in here too. Kenza would be fun to watch. I haven't used them in years. Now, let's see. I'm trying to think the last live session that I did with oils. It wasn't all that long ago. But I've got a bunch of them. And obviously, for the Patreon page, I think I've got 
at least three series in oils the winter russians the morgul knights and there's something else another series that i oh the mountains men those were all in oils I, I really love my oils if it were up to me if i just had an ideal world and i could just say look i can paint this way then all, all i need is these paints it would be the oils now the oil brushers those are designed to dry in a matter of hours even regular oil paints like the Winsor Newton paints that I use those can be dry in a matter of hours because well you're not obviously you're thinning those down like crazy they're the same thickness as this miniature paint right here they're not thick so that takes away a bunch of the drying time straight away and then you couple that with adding maybe something like the liquid but I was amazed I was told that things like the oil brushers dry really fast and I said yeah okay I'll believe it when I see it and then I went to I think it was it wasn't even the next day it was just hours later I went to go play around with it it was all dry I went, what the heck happened here so there's some there will be some new things and the the next oil painting ones just not just the types of paints but there's just some new things that I've tried since the last time I did one of those series I think even even the mountains man even the most recent one I'm gonna be using the oils a little differently than I did in that series and that's that's because I'm still discovering new things with the oils because it's still kind of a new medium for me oh Kinsons have some of the optolongs yep so that is the typical thing that people do with those and it was same thing with the oil brushers they're just for weathering and that's what I thought and then I started painting bolt action stuff with the oils and by painting I mean actually painting the entire vehicle with it and I went wait a minute you can do that <laughs> So then I painted the Winter Russians with it and loved it. And then I used it on the Morgul Knights for Lord of the Rings. And I did it on that unit of Mountains Men. I painted a unit of Kingsguard at Reapercon in oils. That was a lot of fun. I only used Trip. Oh, yeah, that's where you're going to want. Okay, here we go this now the labels a little bit on the worn side here but it's from speedball it's called Mona Lisa it's a nice gentle it's not just gentle on the nose it's gentle on the paints I guess that the nearest equivalent that I've started to use is imagine instead of using say water like I am let's say I was using some kind of a painting medium that maybe is a little bit gentler on the paints well that's the same thing that stuff is real gentle on your paints. Look at how I'm starting to see, pick up a few more lights here now in my in the design on his chest. I will try and do the same here with the pentagram on the book. So it looks like it's actually doing some kind of a glowing thing. And oh, what the heck! I might even do a little bit of it on here too on this part of the cloak. Oh, Gary says he used a little bit of liquid. Now, that's hilarious because I had a discussion with someone. They said, no, no, it's not going to gloss it. It's going to actually flatten it. And I went, I don't know. Not so sure about that. No, it's something i got to try. Now, speaking of trying, look at this. Remember we talked about those chain of lights? So I just added a chain of lighter colors that went up there. Now, that army painter, Annie Shine, that I showed you earlier on, I heck, I use that with acrylic paints whenever there's, even like this. So where I've used the contrast paint, sometimes it's a little more satin, I guess, whereas the pro acryls are very matte. And over here, I'm using the, the green, the clear green paint. That's also very matte. All of the Reaper clears and liners are very matte. So I will use that Army Painter Annie Shine, and it sort of uni unifies everything, which is really neat. 
I'm going to lighten the bottom parts of the beer because it is so close to this symbol here. Now yeah, that that starts to get that starts to do it. I'm gonna try and get a couple of more of these letters to stay. There we go. I know he's he's probably blocking it. Maybe you can see what I'm doing there. But now I'm gonna take some of the Achillean green here, a little touch of the clear green. I'm going to hit Mr. Spider here. There. Again, didn't even realize that was sitting there. I'm going to do a little bit more of that green in between the pages here, too. Oh, maybe the brand had something to do with it. Yeah, this is uh, the Windsor Newton liquid. That is the, you know, you know me, normally I'm talking about cheap brushes and, and, well, obviously a wet palette that's essentially free. But when you when you go into the oils, it's like the, well, the liquid and the, that Mona Lisa white spirits there. I'd, it's best to actually go with some decent stuff there. I did just like the miniature paint here. You know, you're going with the the Reaper paints, the some Vallejos and the the Pro Acrylics, using some decent paint there. Now this is see how we're getting into some cooler. We had warm here. It's cool here, so even our green glow has a little bit of color change to it. Uh, I went back into my clear green again. I'm going to do a little more refining here. I just saw on the beard, so some lines got to be a little bit on the harsher side, so I'm going to reduce that a bit. So, yeah, we're starting to get ourselves a nice little glow work in there. Back. I'm going to leave that as is. I think I'm going to try and get a little green there. Going again with the clear green. It just it loves working with the fluorescent paints. Now, the clear blue when you're doing stuff like the, the the blue glow and everything like I did on the Liz Sherman that worked well and clear magenta plays real well with the fluorescent magenta who would have thought that the clear orange and red definitely work really nice with the fluorescent orange there we go so what I'm gonna do is we'll just say he is Feeny here for now, especially since we don't know if we're going to get zonked out of the internet stuff again. But no, oh, thanks to Gary and First Last, Trevor, Kamitrian, oh, and Gary, and Ken, oh, and Aerox Minis. Aerox, yes, I'm going to pronounce it that way. Well, sorry I missed you. Thanks for the greetings from Japan. Oh, and Ken, of course. Oh, let's see. We had, oh, and first, last. Let's see. What we had. Uh, oh, engineered to draw too. Yes, yes. But I appreciate everybody coming on. So I'll I'll do uh, here. Let's show you how that stuff. Army painter anti shine. Let's just get a little bit of that out here. Now you do want to have a clean brush for sure. I'm gonna tip this over and. You can see it starts out clean and clear. And you notice I'm not going to just slap this on. We're going to just gently I take a little bit of it and I'm going to move it around. I learned the hard way. You can't just slap this stuff on. 
that was a very harsh lesson but say like here on his head and his hands I could paint more of that if I need and it also does sort of enhance your color a little bit here no oh, thanks Trevor oh wargaming lobby hey now were you able to catch Kathy earlier today oh and Black's cleric uh, let's see yeah it's well it's been a crazy 2020 it's not necessarily unexpected it's kind of the usual things that happen in January there we go just having some fun uh, trying out a new where'd you go fluorescent color here so this is the fluorescent green from golden acrylics yeah for whatever reason <clears throat> I don't know 20 ish minutes ago the internet just decided to say nope and it sent everyone to a commercial <laughs> which is really the weirdest thing ever and you tell we're just kind of gently adding this here and there but like here areas that I think are going to be contacted a little bit more well metal of course here we got edges on this metal we're going to do But it really does sort of liven up your colors a bit. There we go. Oh, thanks, Ken. Much appreciated. So we played a few different things here. We used some warmer colors. And within just the green itself, some of it was warmer, some of it was cooler. We changed the eyes around. We certainly made some changes to what we we're going to do on the book here. So I just want to say thanks to everybody that was here, and I will catch you on the next one probably Friday, I'm thinking. We'll do a Friday one again, and it might be another Rohan thing. It might, it might be 40K. It might be, who knows, might be another Hellboy figure. But again, this is Hellboy Rasputin from Mantic Games. Thanks again, everybody. I'll catch you on the next one.